the return of NCAA video games is now more possible than ever before, with the NCAA announcing yesterday that it is now going to be looking into its rules to determine if they should be adjusted to allow the players to now profit off of their name, image, and likeness. This would mean the return of games like NCAA football and NCAA basketball if these rules are changed. Now, if you don't know, the reason that the NCAA games went away a few years ago is because a former college basketball star sued the game companies for using his likeness in game, which is what the companies did. They had the players in game that resembled the real life counterparts, they just didn't use their real names, and eventually this is what spiraled into the games going away. Now the companies didn't mind compensating the players for using their image and likeness, but the problem here was the NCAA rules prohibited them from being able to be compensated, thus that was the roadblock and why these games have not come back since. But with the NCAA now looking into adjusting their rules, and with there being actually a pretty good chance that this will be adjusted, that would mean the return of games like NCAA football and possibly even NCAA basketball. Now I'm going to go over the NCAA press release, I'm going to also touch over a few points in the ESPN article, talk about what they're looking into changing and what this could mean for the possible return of our favorite video games. It says the NCAA president and board of directors appointed a working group to examine issues highlighted in recently proposed federal and state legislation related to student athlete name, image, and likeness. This group will bring together diverse opinions from the membership, from presidents and commissioners to student athletes, that will not only examine the NCAA's position on name, image, and likeness benefits, but potentially propose rule modifications tethered to education. We believe the time is right for these discussions and look forward to a thorough assessment of the many complexities involved in this area. And this was said by Val Ackerman, Commissioner of the Big East. According to the board, the group will not consider any concepts that could be construed as payment for participation in college sports. The NCAA's mission to provide opportunity for students to compete against other students prohibits any contemplation of pay for play. While the formation of this group is an important step to confirming what we believe is an association, the group's work will not result in paying student athletes as employees, said Gene Smith, Ohio State Senior Vice President and Athletics Director. The structure is contrary to the NCAA's educational mission and will not be part of this discussion. A final report is due to the Board of Governors in October with an update provided in August. So basically what they're saying there is they are not going to be paying the players for playing the sports, paying them as employees, just like you pay you know, NFL players, or NBA players for playing for your team. They will not be doing that in college because it goes against their mission of you know what they're all about. But what they are going to try to do is allow these players to at least be able to profit off of their name, image, and likeness, which would mean being compensated for being in video games or being paid for signing autographs, which they have gotten in trouble in before. The ESPN article touches on a few other points. It says here, NCAA rules forbid athletes in most circumstances from receiving benefits or compensation for use of their names, image, and likenesses from a school or outside source. For example, college athletes cannot take part in commercial advertising or sign autographs for money, which noticeably got Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel into trouble in 2013. Todd Gurley is among several prominent athletes suspended by the NCAA for receiving money for autographs. In 2014, Gurley, then with the University of Georgia, received a four-game suspension after an investigation determined he had received $3,000 over two years for signed autographs and memorabilia. The NCAA's amateurism rules have faced several legal challenges in recent years and threats from lawmakers. A federal antitrust lawsuit brought by former UCLA basketball star Ed O'Bannon in 2009 challenged the NCAA and its members' schools' right to use athletics or athletes' names, image, and likenesses without compensation. The case led to the elimination of the NCAA football video game series, and in 2014, U.S. District Judge Claudia Wilkin ruled the NCAA would not restrict schools from paying athletes up to $5,000 per year for name, image, and likeness. That part of the ruling was overturned on appeal, but the issue has been one that continues to hound the NCAA. How rules are applied often seems inconsistent, if not illogical. And then it says here they got a quote from Ed O'Bannon after this press release. It says, hmm, I wonder where the NCAA got the idea to modify their rules to allow college athletes to be compensated for their use, names, and likeness. I've been saying for over a decade this is the right thing to do for college athletes. It also mentions here, last year, a kicker at UCF gave up his scholarship rather than stop making money off of his profitable YouTube channel, which threatened to make him ineligible to play. But Notre Dame basketball star 
I don't know how to say this guy's name, he was allowed to participate in a popular television show like Dancing with the Stars. So as you can see, the rules are inconsistent. The UCA, the UCF kicker had a YouTube channel that was really blowing up and the you know university found out about it and they said, hey, if you want to play for the university, you have to turn off the monetization of your YouTube channel. You're not allowed to use money off your name, image, and likeness because part of the reason he was blowing up and making money is because he was using his you know he had he was filming on UCF campus he was using the fact that he was a UCF kicker as you know part of his I guess gimmick even though that's who he really is and he deserves to make money off of that UCF said no you can't play for the school we're gonna revoke your scholarship if you continue to profit off of the fact that you're a kicker for UCF it's not allowed so he dropped his scholarship he continued his YouTube career and now I believe he's well over 2 million subscribers and he's making a boatload of money off YouTube so he didn't really make a bad decision uh, but it's just the fact that he had to choose which was a big deal so basically what all this means here is NCAA games have a really good chance more than ever to finally return now uh, this is a pretty big bombshell and something that now gives some real hope the fact that the NCAA themselves are looking into possibly modifying the rules is a huge step We've seen proposed bills and things like that, but this is much bigger than that, seeing as the actual NCAA is looking into adjusting its own rules and not being, I guess, necessarily forced into it, even though there is a little bit of pressure on their back to let these athletes be compensated. I honestly think this is the beginning of the return of NCAA games, and so do other publications who have covered games for a while. Operation Sports had this to say. They said, the final report of the current inquiry is due in October. Assuming that that comes back as a yes for athlete payments, and it feels somewhat inevitable that we're heading for a yes, giving the, mount the mounting of public pressure, that would mean we can probably start about an 18 to 30 month countdown on getting an NCAA football and basketball game out the door to customers. Now, if the group does decide to allow the players to be compensated for their likeness, the game publishers will definitely have to invest in making college games and they would have to negotiate with the players directly, which would definitely be quite the process. It would be very time consuming and it would cost a lot of money to say the least. I think you would definitely see uh, companies like EA Sports jump at the chance to make NCAA football again as they already have a lot of what they need in place to start developing a game. This could also open up the doors for 2K to get back into the football mix, but I don't know how interested they would be due to being out of football for so long and it would cost them so much to build on what they need to develop a football game and with the fact that they just pay the NBA like a billion dollars to continue their partnership for the foreseeable future, it would be difficult to see them forking over the amount of money it would take to license the NCAA, its teams, compensate the players, and have to build out everything they need to develop a game. Uh, the fact that EA would also be able to beat them to market would probably discourage them, but there's a chance and that's definitely something to be very excited about. If all of this ends well, we're still likely about two years away from a game being released, but that goes by a lot quicker than you think. NCAA 22 is more of a possibility right now than it ever has been over the last few years, and I will be sure to keep you guys updated on the process every step of the way to let you know what's going on with the, you know, investigation or, you know, the rule set. Like they said, they will be updating it in August. So by August, which, I mean, you're talking about three months away, we should have kind of an idea of what we're working with then and then of course in October the final verdict comes down but as other publications have said the pressure is really on the NCAA right now and of course they're not going to pay their players as employees but just letting them being able to profit off their name image and likeness from video games autographs you know maybe doing commercials you know think of a guy like a Zion think of how much money he stood to make while playing for Duke if they would have allowed him to you know be in a commercial you know for Nike or something like that or you know if they would have allowed him to sign autographs I mean look how much money people were paying to go watch the UNC versus Duke game there were tickets being sold for over ten thousand dollars because they wanted to watch Zion Williamson go against UNC so just imagine the kind of money a player of his caliber could stand to make if this rule passes and players of his caliber should be allowed to do that because nothing is guaranteed you could get injured tomorrow we saw him get injured in that exact game in the first few seconds of that game what if that would have been a serious injury and he would have you know slid in the draft or maybe what if it was a career ending injury you know there's so many things that could have happened that could have hurt his potential return so the least they could do is allow these players to profit off of their name image and likeness especially the big stars because they have so much to lose and very little to gain for playing for these universities because a guy like Zion was always going to go number one no matter what
But the fact that he had to wait it out and he has to play that one year of college ball, he has everything to lose by playing college ball by suffering a crazy injury. So I do think this will pass. I will keep you guys updated every step of the way, but I'm really excited about it. Let me know below. Are you excited about it? I'm sure most of you are. Do you think 2K might get back in the mix? Let me know below. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest news, and I will see you guys next time.